Google just dropped their new nano banana image model and it might have just killed half of the AI tools out there. So in this video, I'm gonna jump into the actual software so you can see it in action and show you some real business use cases that you can actually use this model in. I'll even walk you through an automation we're running inside of N8N using this exact software. And finally, we're going to compare Nano Banana's model to the top AI software tools so you can see how it really stacks up. Let's dive in. All right, we're going to jump right in in the actual platform. I'm gonna drop it two different images, one of a uh, product and one of me. So right here is the image. You can see I just turned my screen and just took a screenshot and an uh, image of a bottle. And let's say, make an image of me holding the bottle and making it look like I'm washing my hands with it. This is advertising. All right, so I just said, make an image of me holding the bottle and making it look like I'm washing my hands with it. This is advertising the bottle. Now the prompt is horrible, but we'll see with what it does with the actual prompt um, to be able to see the actual quality without having to prompt it really, really well. All right, so we can see here, it just made the image of me holding the bottle, which is insane. Look at the accuracy in the face, it's nuts. Um, and it did all of that within 15 seconds. Now, this sort of image can be used, can be applicable for e-commerce stores as they have to sell products and they need someone holding that product in the image to advertise it. So that's sort of the business use case that we can use here within the actual platform. I wanted to show you exactly what it looks like here. But now let's jump onto N8N and let's go through an automation that actually has Nano Banana inside the automation and show you exactly how it works. Uh, so first thing I'm gonna do is execute workflow. I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna put two images. Let's do this and this, John Cena in the bottle. All right, so I just pasted the prompt. Uh, this prompt basically says to combine the person with the shampoo bottle to make it look like a luxury uh, advertisement uh, for the shampoo bottle itself. I'm gonna press submit. I'm gonna go here. You can see that the automation ran. So it got the two images. It turned the images into public URLs because that's what we have to feed into Nana Banana in order for it to do its thing. Then we're waiting for us to get the result. If we do, which in this case we did, uh, we're going to download it. Then we're going to upload it to our Google Drive folder. And then we're gonna receive an email with the image itself. So we can see new Nana Banana image saying, hey, here's a file. And if you go to the file, we can see John Cena with the actual image shampoo bottle, which is insane. Uh, the quality of it is crazy. And if I go to a folder here, I can see that this image was generated here and we're gonna have all the images generated in the same exact place. All right, so let's dive in in the actual automation on N8N. And, and by the way, if you want the full blueprint, all you have to do is press the first thing down below, which will take you to my free school community. Go to the classroom section, go to the templates vault, and you'll see the latest video that says this. You'll see a button here. Uh, all you have to do is press this button, download the file, and import it into your own N8N account. And if you have no clue how to do it, no worries, I even added a tutorial right here. All right, so. Let's go step by step, node by node, to show you exactly what it looks like. Uh, so the first step is obviously the form because we need to have an input, right? What is the input that we give Nano Banana in order for it to actually do its thing? Well, the input in this case is a form and the form has a prompt. In this case, it's text. So if I execute step and I go to the form itself, I can see that it's asking me for a prompt and it's asking me for image one file. Now the image one file in this case will be the two different images that we give the actual form for it to actually do something. And the prompt is the thing that we give Nano Banana in order for it to say, hey, do this using these images right here. So that's what we do with the, with the form itself. Let me stop listening. And we have prompt, which in this case is a text field. And then we have image one file, which is a file field. Uh, and we can allow multiple files because we want two different files in the same input. And as you can see here, we have the data. Then the next step is actually making the image uh, public because Nano Banana doesn't take images that are not publicly accessible to the web. Because the images that come through the form, they're not accessible to everyone. So what we do is we use a software called ImageKit, which is the one here, imagekit.io. I looked at the API documentation and we basically make a request. So the request just means, what is the thing that we send the server in order for us to get something back? And in this case, the thing that we send it is the data that comes from the form. And then we give it a uh, request, which in this case is two different ways, just because it's two different images. And then we bring it all back here to get the two items, which are the uh, URLs that we have right here, right here, which are the accessible version of the actual uh, image that we give it. So again, we get the form, we put the two different files, then we send the data to the actual uh, software itself. And by the way, if you download the template, you'll have the request right here that you can just plug and play. And all you have to change is the API key, which you can get on developer uh, options. And it's this one right here, private key. So press this button, you can copy it, and then you have to replace it right here. Place it right here with yours and everything else will be the same. 
and do the same thing with this. And again, we're splitting it because it's two different files. And then we merge them because we're splitting them, making two different URLs, and then we're bringing them back together to then go to the next steps. So the merge node is there for us to combine the matching fields, which in this case is data.url, because that is the field that we get here, right? Data from URL is the URL of the image, which is the exact same here and here because we're requesting the same server. Now, once this is done, what we do is because we're getting two items, we want to be able to aggregate them. What that means is these two right here are separated, but we want them in the same place, which in this case will be formatted like this instead of two different items, which are two different uh, sort of times that you run the automation. And we put them in the same item, right, like this, in order for us to then be able to generate the image using the software right here. And in order for us to connect the Nano Banana to our Anitin account, we have to use a software called Falda AI, which is sort of like Open Router in a sense that Open Router has different models like Claude, ChatGPT, Gemini, Grok, and you just have one account and you can use all the different models. In this case, this is the exact same with File because File has all the different image models. And if you just subscribe to File, you'll have access to all of them. So in this case, we're just using uh, File's account and we get $10 of free credits when you sign up. All we have to do is go to Account, go to API Keys. You have to create a new key right here. Name it whatever you want. Once you create a key, you can then go here. As you will have the blueprint, you will have the request right here. And you have to just put this URL right here. The, uh, the headers, the method will be post because we're posting something, we're sending information. Then we are adding headers as a way to authorize the request because the server needs to know exactly that it is our account and it's our key and we're spending our money. And we give it the actual key that we have. And then for the JSON itself, this is the JSON, which means this is a thing that we send the actual server for us to get something back. So if I go here, I can see that the prompt, so this is the JSON sort of body that we give it uh, from the API documentation. The first thing is a prompt, which is the thing that we get from the form, which is the one right here, combine the person and shampoo, bottle, XYZ. Then we have the different image URLs. The image URLs are the two different images that we use to then combine when we want to make something. And in this case, it would be URL zero, and then it'll be URL one. And these are the different images that we then combine to make the final image that we saw before. Once you have this connected, you will see that the output is this. Now, the way that Nano Banana works and Faldo AI works is that we don't actually get the image, um, the final image. What we get is a status, which is in queue, and we get a response URL. Now, what this means is that we basically send the request to the server because it is, again, a post request, which means that we're sending information from one place to another. And in this case, we're sending information like, hey, here are the two different images. Here's a prompt. Go out and make the actual, um, the actual image. And what it gives us back is saying, hey, yeah, it was successful, it's in progress. And so what we have to do then is add a wait node to wait at least 10 seconds in this case, um, yeah, 10 seconds, before we try to get the image back. So in this case, we're calling this URL with a get request because we're getting the information. So again, we sent the information like, hey, make the image. Now we're saying, hey, can I get the image back? Or can I get the image, the final image that we want? With no body, we're just putting the ID right here, which is the ID of the Nana Banana right here, which is the request ID. And as you can see here, the output is this image right here. God damn, this looks crazy. It looks insane. Um, all right. And again, the only fields you have to put is this URL right here and replace it with the request ID, which you get from here, request ID. Plus, you have to change the key that we have here. In this case, this is mine, but you'll have yours uh, in the header section. So once this is done, so once we have this, the reason why we're going two different ways is because sometimes we make the image. So we say, hey, make the image. We wait 10 seconds, but the image is not made yet. And when it's not made yet, it actually errors out. So there's an error saying, hey, the image is not made yet. Don't try to, I, I can't give you anything back. So in this case, if it errors out, if it says, hey, we don't have the image yet, we send it through another wait to be able to wait 10 seconds. And then we try again. And we try again until it's successful and we go to the next steps. This is a hack that I learned within NITN to be able to, to mitigate errors because if you didn't have this, we would just error out and the workflow would just stop, which isn't good long-term because we want something that's maintainable, that's scalable over time. Um, so again, send a signal. We say, hey, let's wait 10 seconds before we get the image because it's a two-step automation. And then we said, okay, if the automation is not there yet, if we didn't get it yet, the server says, no, it's, we don't have it yet. Then we just send it one way to be able to wait another 10 seconds to then try again, try again, if it errors out again. When it's successful, when we get the actual image URL, then we go this way, which is downloading the actual image URL from the public URL that we just made using ImageKit. And to do this, we're just using a simple HTTP request, 
which is a get request. And again, if all these requests make no sense to you, don't worry, it's actually much more simple than it sounds. It's just get and post. But in this case, what we're doing is that we're calling a server. And by the way, HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Makes no sense with that name. But what it means is that we're calling an external server on the web and saying, hey, can we get something or can we send you something? In this case, we're getting the URL and we're downloading it. As you can see, we have the data, which in this case is in a format called a binary format, which we need in order for us to then upload it to Google Drive. Now, the reason why I added this right here is because sometimes it trips out and it actually gives me two items. It gives me two images when we don't want. So all I have to do is just put a limit node and add one max items, which means that it only sends one at a time or one in general. And then we upload it to Google Drive using an upload file. And by the way, if you want to connect your Google Drive to any 10, make sure to check out this video up here. Um, and then we put file, which is the actual thing that we're doing. The action that we're taking is uploading it. The input data, which is this right here, will be data because we're matching it, data, data. And then we are storing it in the image nano banana software, um, sorry, in a folder on Google Drive. So if I go here, image, nano banana, this right here will be the folder that we store everything in when we have to make the actual image. So then when we upload it to the Google Drive, and I do this because we ideally want a Google Drive that has all the images without us having to go back to the emails that we got with all the images as well uh, and have everything stored in one place. And finally, after we upload it to Google Drive, we can send us an email saying, hey, here's a file with the image generated from your form. Here's the actual link to the image. And here's the folder, which is the one right here, with the images as well. Now, again, you will have the exact blueprints. All you have to do is download it into your own account and make the connections. And again, to make the Gmail connection, all you have to do is go here, just sign in with Google. This is not the same as uh, Drive. This is much easier. Just press this button. It will take you to this page. You can choose the account and so on. And when you bring it back, you will have the connection ready. All you have to do is choose message. Then the action we're taking is send. So we're sending a message. Then the email that we're sending it to will be, in this case, your email. The subject line will be, uh, I mean, I chose new nano banana image with a small m and then the actual text in the image or in the email sorry will be html now why is it html is because html is a way that we make our emails look pretty so if i go to my email here i can see that here we have the emoji alongside with the hyperlink so the hyperlink just means that it's images and the link is inside the images so you can just press that this is only done with html which is exactly why we add this and this as well. So this right here is the exact email that we sent back to us on our account to be able for us to get notified when we finish the image. So let me run this whole thing step by step from scratch and let me use a different image in this case uh, so we can try it with something else. Let me execute workflow. So I'm just gonna drop the uh, Messi and I'm gonna drop the Real Madrid shirt. So don't hate me guys, just an example. I'm gonna open this, I'm gonna paste it here which is a whole prompt saying, hey, um, with the image uploaded, make it look like he's wearing the shirt, make it look like he's playing football with it. I'm gonna press submit. I can then see that the image was turned public in the first uh, step right here. So we can see that this image right here is this, the Real Madrid shirt. And then the second image is this right here. Then we merge them. So we get the two different URLs and put two items instead of two separate uh, steps. Then what we do is we aggregate them. So we'll have two different images, again, in the same sort of, we call it an array. And then we call Nana Banana saying, hey, here's the images, right? Here's the two different images. Right, so here's the two different images right here. And then we get a response saying that it's in queue, which is great. Then what we do is we wait 10 seconds. We try to get the image. In this case, it's actually failed the first time. So it failed, that's why it went here to wait 10 seconds. Then you went back here. And then only do we get the image, we download it, and then we send one at a time. We then upload it to our Google Drive, and then we send ourselves an email with the actual image itself. So if I go here, I can see that I got a new email with the image itself, with Messi with a Real Madrid shirt, which is illegal. Uh, but now you can see that it's so realistic. It looks like an actual image, and it was stored in our Google Drive folder as well. We have this right here, and we have this. So you can just imagine all the use cases you can think of when it comes to these imaging techniques of combining two different images for whatever it is. E-commerce, advertisements, uh, general images, uh, social media posts, anything that you can think of combining two images, this is great. So that right there is a full workflow in N10 using the actual Nana Banana image software. And now let's look at how the model itself compares with the other models. So in this case, on a speed level, it is the fastest, right? It's definitely the fastest out of all of them. And you can see it only took 10, 15 seconds. Mid journey takes quite a bit of time. Dali A3 is medium. 
and stable diffusion is very, very slow. I think GPT image one is even slower. Um, now in terms of cost, Nana Banana is definitely the cheapest right here with four cents per image, which is insane. Uh, Mid journey is $4. And then we have $1, $1 as well. The resolution is the highest. And then we have the prompt fidelity, which just means how close does the image software follow the prompt? In this case, Nana Banana is very, very high. And then we have Mid Journey Medium. DALE 3 is medium and Stable Diffusion is variable as well. As you can see by this, we made the image with the software itself. All right, so that right there marks the end of the video. I showed you exactly what it looks like on the actual platform itself, how it can be applied to automations within N10, and also how it can compare to other image models as well. And if you ask me what I think of it, I think this is insane. I think it really does change the landscape of the creative industry because now they're able to make so many more images and so many more creatives that are actually quality just by a single prompt. And if you like this video and you wanna dive deeper into N10, then make sure to check out this video on the screen where I show you how I built a full customer support AI agent for an e-commerce store that automated 90% of their support emails. With that being said, I hope you found value from this video and I'll see you in the next one.